All right, so here we are on 5.1. So the very first thing that we are going to do is, uh, well, circumcenter, orthocenter. But before we do the circumcenter, now I did teach this to you yesterday, even though it's not on YouTube, but I'm going to redo it. So do you remember the first thing that we talked about yesterday? Uh, That's it, the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so again, let's review. Hopefully it should just be review. What does that mean? Let's do this. Let's put a point at the end of this and a, end of this. So this is this is not a line. It's a what? It's a line, segment. line segment, right? Because you can't bisect a line. Why can you not bisect a line? That's right. It doesn't have a midpoint because it just keeps on going forever and ever. To tell you the truth, any point on a line could be considered the midpoint, I guess, right? Because you pick any point on a line, it's just as far in one direction as it is the other direction. Do you agree? All right. But on a line segment, you definitely have a midpoint. So let's find that midpoint. And that would be about right there. So let's put a point right there. So that's the midpoint. And what we're going to do is we're going to go perpendicular to that point. There we go. We could go all the way through. All right. But for today's, we're just going to hit right there. All right. So if this is a right angle, this would be perpendicular. Agreed? And this is the what? The midpoint. So this right here would be considered it's an arrow right there. The what? The perpendicular bisector. All right. Now the perpendicular bisector is pretty important because what we're gonna do in a little bit. But yesterday I kind of went a little too fast and I skipped over this whole thing. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to deal with a perpendicular bisector, but we're going to um, we're going to talk about something. Uh, so let's go to GeoGebra right now. I got to flip it over. There we go, on YouTube. Oops. Okay. All right. So let's do a perpendicular bisector with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a segment. Actually, I think for some reason. When I use that pen, that was making things weird. So there's a segment right there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a perpendicular line to this. Not just a perpendicular line, but actually a perpendicular bisector. So right there, do you see where it says perpendicular bisector? And I click on this, and I click on that, and boom, there's my perpendicular bisector. Okay, it's perpendicular. And in fact, this, this uh, program, if I click here and here, look, it even tells me what that angle is. It's kind of cool, isn't it? So that's definitely perpendicular, would you agree? And it's a bisector. Let's see if it actually is a bisector. So what we can do is I'm going to make a segment from here to there. And then I'm going to make another one from here to there. OK, that should be good. And now, hopefully, this will work. Go over here and actually, let's do this. So got to hit the Move key believe and yeah that's that whole thing okay that's good I'll show you what I did in a second let's do this let's make this instead of that line keep on going forever and ever let's make it a segment so let's just start it from here and let's go anywhere just say right there all right and now what I can do is get rid of this there we go. All right, now we're moving. Now we're doing something. All right, so I've got a perpendicular bisector. Would you agree? All right, it's, well, how do we know that's the bisector? Well, what I could do is I could measure it. So I could take this thing right here. Actually, let's do this. Um, distance or length. And click on that. Boom. So that is 6.9. I click on that. That's 6.9. All right, so now you can tell that it is the midpoint. Agreed? Mm -hmm. If I wanted to, look, I can move this in. See what's happening? All right? If I move it in, it still keeps those two segments equal to each other. All right? So they're both the same. I could tilt like that. See, the segments are still equal to each other, still perpendicular. All right? It doesn't always have to be like straight across, straight up and down. So that's kind of cool. All right, but here's what we really want to look at. 
according to this theorem in here, I'm going to put a point anywhere on the perpendicular bisector. Let's just put the point right there. So it's point E. Now, what this theorem says, it says, if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, so does this point E lie on a perpendicular bisector? Yeah, it does, because we said that this D, whatever that point is right there, that would be a perpendicular bisector. So I'll tell you what, let's just, let's move this 90 kind of out of the way. That's C, all right? So uh, DC is the perpendicular bisector. E is a point that lies on the perpendicular bisector. Here's what the theorem says. If, I'll tell you what, without just telling you what it says, let's take a guess. What if I drew a line segment from E to A, and then I drew a line segment from E to B? What do you think might be true about those two line segments, AE and BE? Yeah, they look like they're equal, don't they? All right, let's see if they actually are equal. So I come down here and hit distance, click on this. That one's 7.2. What do you think that one should be? Okay, there it is, yep, 7.2. Let's move it over here so we can see a little bit better. So that's pretty cool. Now, is are they equal to each other just because I put it at a particular spot? No, I could put a point anywhere on this perpendicular bisector and these two segments right there, okay, the distance from that point to this endpoint and from this point on the perpendicular bisector to the other endpoint, um, it's always going to be the same. So it's cool. Watch this. See, I can move this around. No matter where I move it on the perpendicular bisector, what's true about those two lengths? They're going to be exactly the same, okay? Now, what if I put a point like out here? right there and then went from here to here. Would they be the same? No, they wouldn't be the same, all right? What's, what makes these two the same if the point lies on where? The, the perpendicular what? Bisector, okay? That's kind of cool, isn't it? Right, you could just, you know, believe me, I guess, if I just drew it out and said those two things are equal to each other. And you're like, okay, I'll believe you. Um, but using this program, it's kind of cool because it actually shows you that those two are equal to each other. All right. So that's what the, the theorem says. But it also has, I don't know if you have your book open, but it says a point, if a point lies on the perpendicular, of a, I'm sorry, let's say it like this. A point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment. All right. This E right there is a point that lies on the perpendicular bisector of this segment right here. It says if and only if it's equidistant from the endpoints, equidistant from the endpoints. So that means from here to here, right? That's the distance from the point on a perpendicular bisector to the end point. It's equidistant. It means it's the same distance from this point to this over here, okay? But it says if and only if. When they say if and only if, it means you can take the if and the then, and you can take them and you could switch them, all right? So this says if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector, then these two segments are going to be equal to each other. What if I flipped it around? What if I said, if these two segments are equal to each other, then this point lies where? On the perpendicular bisector. Do you see the difference? The first one says, if the point's on the perpendicular bisector, then the two segments are equal. If you flipped it around, it would say, if the two segments are equal, then that point must be on the perpendicular bisector. So it's kind of like two theorems in one, okay? That's when it says, if and only if. If and only if means... You can take the if then, switch it around, right? And it means the same exact thing, all right? So that's kind of cool. That's an if and only if statement. All right, everybody good with that? All right, oops, I don't want to make it bigger. I want to, want to do, oh, I got to click and drag. Oops, don't want to do that. I got to hit the move tool. Now I can click and drag and move it out of the way. All right, I'll tell you what, let's just do this instead. Let's just clear it, all right? Don't want to save it. All right, that way we start off with A, B, and C again. It starts from scratch. I think it will. So now we're going to do what we did yesterday, but I was having a little trouble with it. So hopefully, it seems like things are working right today, so let's try it one more time. What I'm going to do is draw a triangle, okay? So just any old triangle. It doesn't have to be a specific type of triangle, but there's any old triangle. So what are we going to do with that triangle? We did it yesterday, so you should have an idea what we're going to do today. What lines? Be specific. We just talked, we said it like 50 times, it seems like. Perpendicular bisector, right? Didn't seem, it seems like I said it a lot, didn't it? So we're going to do the perpendicular bisector of every one of these sides, all three of these sides. So let's do that quickly. So I just hit perpendicular bisector, which is kind of cool. It has it. And I just hit this side. There you go. That's a perpendicular bisector. 
So where does that point then? That point is the what of AC? It's the midpoint, right. And what kind of angle do we have here? That's a right angle, all right? So let's just do it to all three of these. Yeah, and look what they do. They all meet at a point, okay? They're all perpendicular bisectors, but they're perpendicular bisectors of all three sides of the triangle, okay? And they all meet at that point. And that's kind of cool that they all meet at one point, um, but there's something more specific about that. We're going to talk about it in a second. We talked about it yesterday, so you probably already know, but we're going to talk about it again. But let's clean this up a little bit. I don't like all these lines flying all around the place. Let's just make them line segments. So I think this is going to work this time. So um, I'll tell you what, no, what I'm going to do is this. This is what I want to do. I'm just going to put a point right there. Okay, so that thing right there, what do we call that point? This is called the what? It's where they all meet when the perpendicular bisectors all meet at one point. We give it a name. The circumcenter, very good. Okay, we call that the circumcenter. So let me hit this tool. Let's click this, and then I can uh, change the name of it. This is what I was trying to figure out how to do yesterday, and I forgot, but then I remembered circumcenter. All right. And there we go. See, isn't that cool? So now I can name that point right there, um, and I can call it circumcenter. I can move it around about right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those three lines. I'm going to get rid of those three lines, right? But because we're not really going to use them, the only reason that we used them is to find out where the circumcenter is located, all right? Now here's something I did yesterday. I'll keep the lines there for right now. Um, watch. If I move it around, look, what kind of triangle is this triangle now? It's obtuse, isn't it? Look where the circumcenter is. Where's the circumcenter? It's outside the triangle, okay? What kind of triangle is it now? It's acute. Where is the circumcenter? It's inside. See, all these are acute. Now, what if... The more boom. Obtuse, the more so, so, yeah, okay. Well, the more obtuse, the more out it goes. I guess you could say that. But this right here is not obtuse and it's not acute. What does this look like? Angle B looks like what kind of an angle? A right angle. Look where the circumcenter lies. Lies where? On the triangle, but not just anywhere on the triangle, at a, at a particular spot. Look at it. This would be the right angle at the midpoint. You're right. At the midpoint of AC. And where else? On the what of the... This is a word that we haven't used in a while. What does a right triangle have? What's the side opposite the right angle? Starts with an H. Good geometry word. The hypotenuse, very good, it's the hypotenuse. So if it's a right triangle, look where the circumcenter lies. It lies at the midpoint on the hypotenuse. Everybody got that? So that's kind of cool. I was trying to do that yesterday and they like went away and I can't figure out why it did. But now what we're gonna do is get rid of these lines. So let's go back to this. Let's click that, let's get rid of that one. Let's get rid of this one. And let's get rid of this one. And then we're gonna find out what's unique, what's special about that circumcenter, all right? Well, we've already talked about one thing. If it's an obtuse, see that's an obtuse triangle, circumcenter is outside. If it's acute, it's inside. If it's right, it's where? Not just on it, but where on it? At the midpoint of the hypotenuse, okay? At the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Everybody good with that? All right, let's just make it like this right now. Now what we're gonna do is find out what's special about it. This is kind of what we were talking about yesterday. Do you remember what it was? The distance from the circumcenter where? To the, um, to the outside. Give me to the other points, right? That's true, to the other points, but give me a more of a specific vertices. vertices. Very good. Okay. So watch. If I went to that vertex, then I went from the circumcenter to this vertex. Let's see, right there. And then I went from the circumcenter to this vertex. What does it look like might be true? Look, I could I could make this triangle any kind of shape, but well, look at those like three lines. Yeah, but look at the lines themselves. Don't look at the three triangles. Yeah, look, no matter how I make this triangle, do you see it? Look, I can move this around. What's happening to those three lines right there? Even if I make it like this, they all stay the same, right? All three of those are going to equal each other. How do I know they're equal? Do you just believe me? Yep. Now, on this program, what can I do? I can check, right? So I can... Click on this. So that's 6.8. What should this be? 6.8. What should this be? 6.8. There it is. Okay. Isn't that cool? 
Wish I would have done this yesterday, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, so no matter how I move it, now if I move it, I can actually see the numbers. So I move it like that, everything's 7.5, right? So I don't have to just look at it and say, well, they sure look like they're the same. No, we can ab absolutely tell that they are all the same. It doesn't matter if it's an obtuse triangle, right? The distance from the circumcenter to each of the vertices is always going to be the same, all right? doesn't matter how we draw it. They're always going to be the same. And that's what we want to know about the circumcenter. That's what's important. So the, basically, the two things that I'm going to ask you on a quiz or a test about the circumcenter is this. I'm going to say, generally, I don't know exactly what it is, but it, oh, what is the, something about, like, what is the name of the point that is concurrent with the perpendicular bisectors? What would you say? Concurrent means all three lines do what? They meet at one point. Okay, remember I had all those lines on there? Okay, they all met at that one point. So what do we call the point when, or yeah, what do we call the point that when we draw the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle, what do we call that point where they meet at? The circumcenter, okay? So that's going to be one of the questions on a quiz or a test right there. Everybody got it? Now, let's talk about the circumcenter. Let's go a little bit more a uh, little further. Now I'm going to give you a like a, a math question. So I may say that this is the circumcenter and if we'll call this D. I didn't put it it had a D earlier, right? But I made it circumcenter. Let's call this D. So what if I said DC was 6.4? Okay? What is AD or DA? You know it's 6.4. You know it's 6.4 exactly. Okay? Or I could ask what DB was. That's also 6.4. Oh, well, well, I would have I would have either told you that that was the circumcenter, right? I would like on the problem I I might say point C or point D is the circumcenter, okay? So, with that said, then you know that from here to here, here to here and here to here are all the same, okay? I might give you like this is x plus 2 and this is 8 or something like that. Okay, solve for x. So you would just say x plus 2 equals 8 and then solve for x. Make sense? You could have that. All right, so the fact that these are equal to each other, that's what's important about the circumcenter. Everybody good with that? Let me show you one more thing about this, which is kind of cool, and I didn't even attempt to do this yesterday. Um, why do they call it the circumcenter? What other word have we used in geometry, maybe in other math classes? Right, circumference, right, circumference. Let me show you why they call it the circumcenter, all right? Now, you know a circle, what's the dot in the middle of a circle called? Now, the dot in the middle, the point in the middle of a circle, what do we call that? It's just the center, the center, okay? I thought maybe since you had center right here, you would think of that, but that's okay. Um, it's the center of the circle. So watch what I'm going to do. I can actually click this circle button right here. See that? Circle with center. And what I'm going to do is click on this, and it's going to make a circle with that point as the center. Now check this out. If I click on it and draw it out, how far do you think I'm going to take it? All, all the way to where the vertices are, right? So about right there. Is that... I think I'm, I think I'm on it. Yep, right there. So check this out. And we're going to do, not today, but when we do the in-center, you'll see that. You're going to have a circle on the in-center that actually goes inside of the triangle. This one does what? It goes on the outside, or the what of it? The circumference, right? So circumference and circumcenter. And why is that true? Why did we get a circle? And it actually hits at all three points. Because look, what is 6.4? It's the what of the circle. Somebody said it earlier when I was... The 6.4 is the vertex of the circle? We don't even have a vertex of the circle. You're just thinking of geometry words and just spouting them out. Okay, say it. I heard somebody say it. The radius, very good. See, look, this 6.4 right here, we'll call this D again. So DC would be the radius, wouldn't it? From the center to any point on the circle. Okay, from DB is the radius, DA. Can you have a circle with two different radii? No. Okay, no. Radii is what? Multiple. It's like multiple radius, right? It's, mul it's uh, oh my gosh, I forget the word. 
it's plural. Okay, it's plural for radi or radius. So it's radii. You could have a million radius. <laughs> Like in here? Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't recall that. But anyway, you could have a whole bunch of radius in here. Radiuses or radii, right? You got to have a whole bunch of them. I just have three right now. But on one particular circle, it only has one radius. Okay? You follow me? Now, if I had a different radius, then the circle would be a bigger circle or a smaller circle, right? If I had a radius of eight, then it wouldn't be the circle. Then it would be a bigger circle. Agreed? All right. So anyway, I think that's kind of cool to see that the reason they call it circumcenter is because it's like the circumference of a circle, and this would be the center of the circle, all right? You had no idea, did you, that triangles and circles actually have, you know, they have a um, connection to each other? Well, here you go. They do. And they will again with inset. Everybody go with circumcenter? All right. Let's do one more, and um, let's just clear this. What do you think we're going to call the other one? Well, we called we had circumcenter. What's the next one? I wrote the I wrote it down at the beginning. What's the name of this lesson? Circumcenter and orthocenter. That's right. Okay, this one's the orthocenter. Uh, hmm. Before we do orthocenter, I tell you what. Let's get rid of this triangle. Let's just clear this. Let's do this. Let's just take. Yeah, remember we talked about this yesterday? I'm not going to try, try to draw a picture, but what if you had a point? I don't know, any point. Boom, right there. Just some random point, okay? It's above the line. It could be below the line, but it's above the line right there. Okay, and if I wanted to find, what was the word we used yesterday? Did you write it, write it down? The altitude, that's right. So I want to talk about the altitude. Now, we've already talked about a perpendicular line, but it was perpendicular to the line segment at the midpoint. Does the altitude have to hit at the midpoint? No, it doesn't. It just has to be what? Give me a good good geometry word. Don't say straight down. That's not a good geometry word. That's it. Perpendicular. It's got to be perpendicular. And I actually have a thing that says perpendicular line right here. So I hit perpendicular. And so what I'm going to do is click C, and then I'm going to click this line. I can click it anywhere. Guess what it's going to do? It's going to make a line that is what? Perpendicular. perpendicular to that line right there. Everybody see that? So I could take this and move it around. See what I'm doing? See what it does to that other line? It's staying perpendicular, okay? So it doesn't matter how it's tilted, does it? It's perpendicular. If I wanted to, we did it once already. Let's do it one more time. Hit angle and hit this and this. There's your 90 degree. All right, would you agree? that that is now perpendicular. Let's do it like this. There you go. See, look, it didn't change, did it? It doesn't matter how you move it around. It didn't change. So what do we call? It's actually not the whole entire line. Let's just do this. Let's hit segment. Let's go from here to here. And let's get rid of this. There we go. All right, that looks a little neater. Okay, so what do we call the distance from C to D? We call it the what? Mr. Sarah to the office, please. Mr. Sarah to the office. Thank you. <laughs> so what do we call from C to D? It's not a perpendicular bisector. It's, it's not a perpendicular bi... Yeah, we get the joke. All right. <laughs> so from C to D, it's not the perpendicular bisector. It is perpendicular, right? But it's not the perpendicular bisector because it doesn't hit this segment in the middle of it. It doesn't hit at the midpoint. So what do we call this? We've said it already. Say it again. The altitude. It's called the altitude, all right, from here to here. Everybody good with that? All right. So now with that said, let's clear it again. With all that said, let's draw a triangle so we know what an altitude is now. So that's different than a perpendicular bisector. It has a little similarity to it, but it's a little different than the perpendicular bisector. So I can make this triangle. Oops, I don't want to do that. I gotta hit that move button. I wish there was a keyboard shortcut to get to that move key, and I don't think there is. I always gotta go up there and click on it all the time. So I can make this any kind of triangle that I wanted to. You can make it obtuse, you can do what, I'm just gonna make it like this, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna draw the altitude, but where are we gonna draw it from? 
When we did that other one, we drew it from a point, didn't we, to the line. So what points do we have here? Yeah, we got A, B, and C, but what do we call those? That's the what of the triangle? The vertex or the vertices, right, plural, the vertices of the triangle. So we're going to go from the vertex, we're going to go perpendicular to the side opposite the vertex, okay? And I don't have to guess. I got my little thing right here that lets me do that, perpendicular line, so I can click on the point. And then I can click anywhere on this line. Guess what it's going to do? It's make a line that's perpendicular to it. All right, right there, that would be perpendicular. Okay, let's do the other ones. So let's go from C to this one right here. See how that's opposite? Boom. And guess what's going to happen with all three of those lines? They're going to meet up. They're going to be what? Give me a good geometry word. You can say intersect, but I want another word. It starts with a C. The lines are, the lines are not congruent. Lines can't be congruent. Concurrent. Concurrent. Remember that word? We learned that a long time ago. We actually had it on a quiz or a test, I believe. We talked about concurrent. All right. So all three of those lines are concurrent. What does that mean that they're concurrent? That means they all meet or they all intersect at one point. Okay. No, this would be, this is not the circumcenter. It's not the circumcenter. Come on. Come on. Follow along with me. It's not the circumcenter because how did we find the circumcenter? We found the perpendicular bisector. Did we find the perpendicular bisector of this? No. We found the what? The altitude, which is different. It's got a little similarity, but it's different. So this is not the circumcenter. This is the orthocenter. That's right. It's not orthopedic, okay? It's orthocenter. So let's write that down. Orthocenter. And to tell you the truth, that's all you got to know about this, all right? You just have to know that that's the orthocenter. Tell you what, just to, um, where's my angle thingy? Oh, there it is right there. So watch, I'm gonna click on this and this. Whoops, I missed it. Click on this, this, there we go. See, there's 90 right there. And just in case you didn't believe me, that's 90 right there. And this one and this one, that's 90 right there. So that shows you from a point perpendicular to the opposite side, that's an altitude. Everybody got it? All right. Let's, uh, let's move this thing around. Watch. If I make it obtuse, guess where the orthocenter is? It's outside. See? Whoops. Let's make it real small. Okay. And then let's move this up here. Like There you go. All right. So if it's obtuse, look where that orthocenter is. It's outside. If it's acute, where's the orthocenter? It's inside. Now, look where it is when it's a right angle. See how that's a right angle right there? Where is the orthocenter now? It's, it's not, it, yeah, it's on the vertex of the right angle, okay, of that right triangle. Do you see that? Okay, that's where it is. Where was the circumcenter? It was at the midpoint of the hypotenuse, okay? So the orthocenter and the circumcenter do different things, don't they? All right, so... On the circumcenter, remember we said what was special about it, what was unique about the circumcenter? It was equidistant from the three vertices. But this one, there's nothing special about it. Sorry, orthocenter, there's nothing special about you. All right, except for the fact that they, it's concurrent, right? All the lines are concurrent. But there's really nothing else beyond that that's really um, interesting about the orthocenter, all right? So, um, I mean, just the fact that maybe, you know, on a obtuse triangle, it's outside. On the acute triangle, it's inside. And on a right triangle, it's right on it, okay? That's really the only thing. So you don't really have to know anything about the orthocenter. It's not equal to anything else, right? The distances aren't equal to anything else. That's it. It's just the orthocenter, and that's it, okay? Uh, let's see. Looking to see if there's anything else. Let's do this. I think I can do this with GeoGebra. Normally I would just do this on my regular graphing thing or my whatever, my other program that I use. Let's draw a triangle. Let's draw specifically an acute triangle. It kind of looks, oops, why do I keep doing that? I've got to hit the move button. All right, that looks acute, doesn't it? All right, now 
the altitude. Now this is pretty important for what we're going to do later. Do you remember, you probably did this in middle school. You had to find like the area of a triangle. Did we do that in here at the beginning of the year? I can't remember. Did we do area of a rectangle, area of a triangle? No? Yeah, I, th I thought we did. I, I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway, you probably remember doing that. What's the area of a rectangle? It's the what times what? The length, the length times the width. Okay, when, you, when we start doing it in here a lot, we're going to go uh, base times height. Okay? Um, it's just one of the sides. Okay, so if it was a rectangle, it would just be base times height. On a triangle, listen, just listen to me. Okay, on a triangle, uh, it's starting to look right. Uh, it's one half the base times the height, all right? What's really important though is the height. It's very important that you understand the height has to be perpendicular. Okay, it's gotta be a perpendicular distance. So what is the height of this triangle? Well, it would be from use perpendicular line, it would be, let's say from here, what is the height of, the, if, if you consider BC as the base, then this right here and perpendicular to it, that would be the height, not the whole entire line. It would just go from here to, come on, there, okay? So AD would be the height. Let me get rid of this guy right here. Just make it look a little nicer. There we go. So AD is the altitude, but it's also the what of the triangle, the height of the triangle. That's really important, okay? Everybody with me on that? So look where the altitude is. The altitude is inside of the triangle. What happens when, that's an, when it's acute? What happens if I made this obtuse? Wait a minute. Yeah, let's do, let's do this. I'm gonna, oops. I'm just gonna move it. Eh, we'll move it all the way out of the way. Let's do this. Let's actually draw a, um, let's go from here to here to here. All right, so what I was doing, I was like basically taking the altitude from here to there. But what if I started here? Where, where would the altitude be for that? Well, let's go perpendicular. It would be from here Watch, if I click on this, look what's gonna happen. Boom, it goes straight. It doesn't even hit the triangle, does it? Okay, but this would be the altitude, like from where? Let's see if I could do this. I don't know if I can, hmm. From there, it's gotta be just across from here. I don't know, I'm just guessing, sorry. But anyway, that right there would be the altitude. Let's go over here, let's get rid of this again. Oh, where is that? There it is. Okay. That's the altitude. But you're like, well, wait a minute. It doesn't even hit the other side. But if I extend it, if I had an imaginary line, and a lot of times we use a dotted line to show this, okay? If we had a dotted line come across here, this would be the height. Everybody with me? Got a few with me. I got one, two, three heads down. Still got one head down. Got two heads down. All right. <laughs> Whatever. All right, so that would be that. So now, what if I had a right triangle? Watch this. I'm going to try to make this as accurate as I can. Actually, let's do this. I'll go boom, go boom. Now, which one's the altitude here? Oops. From where to where? Give me the line segment. What would the altitude? This is a right, let's say this is a right triangle, okay? It would be IJ. Very good. This would be the altitude. So, when it's a right angle, the altitude is right on one of the sides, okay? It's on the triangle itself. When, it's, when you have an obtuse triangle, the altitude is outside of the triangle, all right? And when you have an acute triangle, the altitude is where? Inside the triangle. Everybody got that? So write that down. Acute, the altitude is inside. Acute, the altitude is outside. And... I'm sorry, obtuse. I said acute again, didn't I? Obtuse, it's outside, and then right, it's on the triangle itself. All right, so I think that's pretty Same good. Again. I think we hit it all. Acute is on the inside? Yeah, right there. Acute's inside, see it? So the altitude's inside the triangle. Obtuse triangle, it's outside, all right? And then right here, IJ would be the... Uh, altitude and it's right on the triangle. It's actually parts, one of the sides of the triangle. 
And that's going to be really important later. I don't think in this lesson that's that big of a deal, but I think it's important to understand altitude. Since we already talked about altitude, we're going to talk about it uh, for other things. All right. So with all that said, let's go back to Illustrator, which is this program. And let's see. Looking for the... Um, the lesson. So you had to do what? One to seven last night? All right. So tonight, what I want you to do. Oh, my thing's not writing. Sorry. Because I haven't used it in a while. It shuts off. Uh, so tonight, I want you to do 18 to 28. All right. So basically one to 28. All right. But split it up into two because I'll give you two five points for it. Right. Right. Two uh, separate assignments. So you get, you know, enough points. So they're still due tomorrow. Okay, so one through seven was technically due today. All right, but just hang on to it. Um, and then tomorrow, I want you to do eight, what'd I say? Yeah. Yeah, so you're gonna skip a whole bunch and you're gonna jump to 18 and do 18 to 28. Okay, one to seven and 18 to 28. It's on the work, it's on the uh, well, lesson plan to. thing. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, it's due the next time we have class. You know what I mean, okay? I'm not expecting you to come in here and turn your homework in if we have a snow day, obviously, all right? So if we don't have school, it will be due on Monday. But if we do have school tomorrow, then um, 1 to 7 is one assignment. That's 5-1-A, and 5-1-B is 18 to 28. It's on the lesson plan thing I gave you yesterday. So just look at that, and that's what's going to be due tomorrow or Monday, whatever. Yeah, secure. Yeah, I'll get you one. Yep. Okay, everybody good?